after six months of traveling around Asia, we headed for a place to put down roots and slow things down. Hello guys, Ryan here and welcome back to the One Shot Adventures channel. In this episode, we are on the island of Penang in Malaysia, where we have been living for the past six weeks. Penang is an island off the northwest coast of mainland Malaysia, but it really doesn't feel like an island at all. It's a vast, diverse place with so many different areas to explore. But in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into what it's like to live on the island as an expat or digital nomad. We are going to be looking at everything from where we stayed to the best places to work from, the best things to do, and of course, checking out the amazing local food scene. Now, a few months ago, we spent about four weeks living in Chiang Mai, Thailand, which is very well known as a digital nomad hotspot. And Penang doesn't really have that same reputation. So I was keen to see how it stacks up in terms of cost of living and way of life. Without any further ado, let's get straight into it. As I said before, Penang is a very big island with a lot of great areas that you can base yourself from. Let's take a brief look at three of the best. If you like being by the beach, the resort town of Batu Ferengue is the place to go. It's a particularly good area if you want nightlife, restaurants and water sports. And it also has a very famous night market, which is definitely worth checking out. In the northeast, you have the suburbs around Straits Quay, which is a newly developed area full of new apartment buildings, shopping centers, and a beautiful marina. But we opted to stay in the thriving capital city of the island, which I think gives you the best of everything. Georgetown is Penang's biggest draw best known for its UNESCO World Heritage Old Town, comprised of endless charming streets and beautiful colonial architecture. In recent years, it's also become famous for its incredible street art, and you can't walk too far around the center without seeing some of the impressive artworks all over the walls. Now, Georgetown is far and away the most touristy area on the whole island. And when you're around those crowds every day, it does get a little bit much. So when we were looking at booking some accommodation, we looked on the outskirts of the old town, which turned out to be a really great choice. We have been staying at the Straits Garden Suites, which is an apartment block on the edge of Georgetown. And I've got to say, it is pretty amazing. This place is the very definition of luxury apartment living. Sitting right on Jalan Jelatong, one of the main roads heading out of Georgetown. The apartment block is definitely in a more local area of Georgetown, which is really good for getting away from the crowds of tourists. It's also really good for trying some local food. There are some great Nasi Kanda cafes very close to the apartment literally right opposite the building, is a vegetarian place which was incredibly good value. They have a self-service buffet serving a few different curries every night, as well as an extensive menu of great veggie twists on local Penang favourites. We never paid anything more than 12 ringgit for any meal here, which is an absolute steal. Another great thing about this area is the Gelatong Night Market, which takes place every Friday. A selection of market stalls set up along the road, selling all sorts of things like clothes and technology. But the best part is the giant food selection from the many street food stalls, selling all sorts of Penang favorites for very reasonable prices. And with the apartment only five minutes walk away, it made for some very easy and tasty dinners in. Honestly, I would have eaten here every night if I could have. Now let's move on to our apartment, which was up on the ninth floor of the Straits Garden Suites. And it was the perfect place to call home. 
So this is where we've been living for the past six weeks. This is the main living area. You've got the kitchen and this really nice breakfast bar, which is perfect for having meals or even when we can't be bothered to go out, you can just work from here and it's just a really nice space. This sofa does convert into another bed as well, which was very useful for us because our friend Tony came out to spend two weeks with us. So this was kind of her bedroom as well. And luckily the room is big enough that it didn't feel too cramped with the three of us in here. Over here, you've got the bathroom. Nothing overly remarkable, but the shower is really good and it always has hot water, which is very important. And then on the other side of the living room, you've got the bedroom. What I love about this bedroom is how much natural light comes through this side of the room. The whole wall is just covered in windows and waking up here every morning is very, very nice. And lastly, you've got the balcony. I love this view so much. You've got the mountains over there. You can look down onto the local neighborhoods. And just across there, you've got an amazing view of Penang Bridge. The room also included high-speed internet and its own washing machine, which was really useful. But what about the real luxuries of the building? On the ninth floor, you have this incredible swimming pool and a gym that overlooks it. On the ground floor, you've got a really good selection of restaurants and amenities. There's a really affordable conveyor belt sushi restaurant, a delicious Korean food restaurant, a hairdresser and even a 7-Eleven. So you don't really need to leave the building at all. But how much did we pay for our accommodation? Well, we stayed in this specific apartment for five weeks in total and we booked it through Airbnb for £783 which included all of our bills and one professional cleaning halfway through our stay. Now we stayed in similar accommodation in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and this is a hell of a lot more expensive than there. But I always like to compare the prices to where I've come from. And we used to live on the outskirts of London in England, and there is no way you're gonna find somewhere like this on this budget. If you're interested in renting your own place on Airbnb, I've left a link down in the description below, which will give you a huge discount off your first booking. And I'll get a bit of commission from that as well. So it's win-win. I'm going to be adding up all of our extra living costs a little later on in the video. Now, as nice as the Gelatong area is, it does have a few drawbacks. We both like to get some work done on our laptops and we've enjoyed staying in places like Chiang Mai because of the vast number of cafes they have to work from there. And in places, Penang definitely has the same vibe. It's just, there wasn't that many options on our doorstep. The only really suitable cafe to work from near our apartment is an Old Town White Coffee. They are essentially the Starbucks of Malaysia. You'll see them everywhere. And the menu is really extensive with local food and coffee drinks. And it's also really, really affordable. Luckily, the center of Georgetown is full of some amazing spaces to work from. There are currently no co-working spaces in Georgetown, but there's such a wide variety of cafes with different vibes that I'm sure you'll find somewhere that suits you whether that's a cozy little corner or somewhere that turns your cappuccino into a Totoro. Georgetown is also full of loads of affordable eating options. And when we came here for the day, we always made sure to check out the incredible hawker stands around the city center, which have so many great options to try. In fact, every street corner seems to have something delicious being fried up and sold fresh and the variety of ethnicities and cultures on the island means that there's always something delicious to try. 
You can also get some really affordable things to eat in the shopping malls too. If you head up to the food courts, you'll find coffee for under two ringgit and also a great affordable selection of Asian and Western dishes. And while you're there, you can even get a cinema ticket for around 20 ringgit, which is even cheaper than Thailand. The centre of Georgetown is also the place to come for some good nightlife. Whenever we wanted a couple of drinks, we usually headed down to Love Lane, where there's usually some good drink deals on. Luckily, there were also plenty of transport options to get us from the apartment to the city centre. It's about a 40 minute walk, but honestly, we often use the Grab Taxi app, where a single journey will cost around 10 ringgit, depending on how busy it is. We also had a bus stop right in front of the apartment and a return ticket on a local bus will cost only a couple of ringgit. So in terms of all of our other costs, which includes transport, food, drink, and all of our sightseeing on the island, it comes to a total of 415 pounds each, which works out at about 11 pounds per day, which I think is pretty damn good. And it's worth bearing in mind that we didn't really make a massive effort to keep things super cheap. So you can almost definitely do this far more affordably. Overall, I think Penang is a really amazing place to live and work. And it definitely rivals Chiang Mai in terms of livability. It's also full of incredible things to do, like hikes in the national park to the incredible hidden beaches which I'm gonna show you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video or found it useful, make sure you leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.